All right, so what we're gonna be working on here, guys, is just your, your research project for this unit. Obviously, in the last unit, it was on a toxin of your choice, okay? And in this unit, it is gonna be on a plant of your choice, okay? So in this project, you are to examine the growth patterns and adaptations of a plant of your choice, okay? This examination should include a description of the plant's native environments, okay? And the conditions it must deal with in its environment, all right? So make sure you talk about where this kind of plant or your particular plant grows, what those, what that's like. Is it dry? Is it wet? Is it hot? Is it cold? There's, is there seasons? Okay? Is there a lot of competition with other plants? Give a, a good description of the kind of things it has to deal with, all right? So that should lead to an extremely detailed description of how your plant grows, adapts, and deals with those conditions, Okay, so you can talk about tropisms that it might employ. You can talk about how it distributes its roots, okay, its leaves. Is it tall? Is it crawl on the ground? Okay, uh, you know, does it have a special way of distributing its seeds that makes it more effective than others, right? All of those are adaptations of that particular plant that you should talk about, okay? If your plant has any special adaptations to prevent it from being eaten, damaged, or just plain survive, okay, those can be described as well. Thorns on a cactus is an example. Uh, eucalyptus trees can survive being burnt, okay, because their wildfires are very prevalent where they are. Uh, so that would be another adaptation you might want to talk about, okay, um, if you were doing that. Okay, project outline, you need to simply report on the structure of your plants. Okay, so report on the structure of your plant. Is it a flowering plant? Is it a conifer? That means uh, it has cones, so it's like a spruce tree, um, a moss, etc. Okay, what are its specific needs in terms of light, water, soil, and nutrients? Okay, so obviously, guys, you're not going to be doing aquatic plants here. Okay, these have to be terrestrial plants. Um, Okay, so that we can talk about soil and nutrients and things like that. Describe the conditions your plant must be able to survive, how it does this, and use your knowledge of plant structure, growth, and development to illustrate how your plant species is unique and adaptive. Okay, in terms of its life cycle, okay, uh, be specific, right? Describe how the plant is seeded, how it initially develops, what conditions may be necessary for this to occur. I gave you an example last week that there are some plants uh, whose fruit has to be eaten by a certain animal so that the fruit and the seeds go through that animal's digestive tract to remove a coating from the seed so it can actually germinate. Okay, I mean, that's pretty specific, but right, there's adaptations like that out there. Okay, uh, does it grow, uh, describe how it grows as a sapling or a sprout? How long is it considered a juvenile versus when it becomes an adult? Okay, um, describe whether your plant is an annual, perennial, evergreen, or deciduous, okay? What do I mean by annual? Survives one year, perennial grows back every year, evergreen doesn't lose its leaves, deciduous does, okay, things like that. Okay, uh, environmental influences, okay? And we've said this a couple of times now, but describe how the conditions in the plant's environment can affect its tissues. Are there parasitic organisms that it has to fight off? Okay, insects that might uh, choose to harvest it, okay, things like that. Is fire, flooding, drought, freezing, et cetera, a concern? Okay, things like that. You should have many visual aids, pictures, diagrams, et cetera. So if you're doing this in docs, just insert them into the document somewhere and wrap the text around them. Or if you're doing it as a, a slides, then you can just put the pictures in wherever you want. Okay, um, but make sure that you uh, have, maybe if you can find them, charts and graphs like on growth and pop or population numbers or things like that, okay. Um, for citing references, guys, remember that was a place last time where a lot of people lost marks because they didn't follow the correct format for citing their references. So remember, when you are citing your references, they look like this, okay? We want the author's name, the date the article was posted, the name of the website, or sorry, the name of the article, the name of the website, the URL of the website, and the day you accessed it, okay? It should be in that order, and should be in that format, okay? Make sure you have all of those things. Otherwise, the, your mark on what is what should be really the easiest part of the report will suffer, okay? The other place where people lost marks last time, bibliography and planning. Don't forget to do your planning. And I wanna see the same things this time. I wanna see a timeline, okay? And then either a web or an outline Okay, one or the other. Timeline for sure, and web or an outline that says, I thought about how I was gonna put this together before I put it together, or I put it together and then forgot I had to do that, so I put it together after, and Coderia won't know the difference. Okay, one way or the other. All right, 
Questions so far? Okay, questions on the expectations. Okay, so we said we talked about planning. Okay, range of formats are acceptable. Okay, it says PowerPoint here, but it's obviously slides now. I've included a, a template file there for you. Okay, um, if you're having another idea or another format, run it by me. Again, like a video for one person is a lot of work, so I, you know, I, I would say probably shy away from that. Um, Okay, your project, like we said, should have some visual aids. Okay, we're looking between 1,200 and 1,600 words, right? So about the same length as last time. I mean, I said it was between 800 and 1,000, but most people wrote between 1,200 and 1,500 words. That's about how long this one should be in order to do a good job of it. You can ignore this part about the 30 to 40 slides. Uh, I only put that in there because I had a kid who said, uh, uh, well, actually, I took it out of there because I had a kid who just made 30 or 40 slides and he had like three words on each slide. And he said, well, Mr. Coderre, he said 30 or 40 slides. And I said, yes, but common sense also prevails and you clearly have none. Okay. All right. Um, so the five places where it's going to get graded, initiating and planning, easy five marks, timeline, thought web or outline. Okay. Analysis and interpretation is talking about all that stuff that's okay in there. The the uh, adaptability, environment, all that. Communication, how well does your uh, project flow and, and things like that. Research and investigation is your bibliography. Make sure that you're cited in the proper format. And then overall, okay, when I you know, go over your report, is it full of spelling mistakes or is you know, a big mess or one long sentence or okay, things like that. Okay, questions on how that's going to work? Hey, you will have today and tomorrow with the Chromebooks to work on this in class. All right, so there really shouldn't be, well, I mean, there's going to be some homework obviously at home, but you should be able to get quite a bit of work done today and tomorrow in class uh, and get a good start on it because I'm not going to talk very long today. I'm just going to let you work. Okay. Um, due date for this, I believe I made November 15th, so it's two weeks. Okay, Same as the last time, you get two weeks to get it done. Don't leave it till the night before. Okay. Although that is after your long weekend. Okay, because you got Remembrance Day on the 11th, which is a Friday. Okay, so you do have a long weekend before that's due. That would maybe be a good time to finish it up. All right, and of course, I will look it over before it is due if you have it done before that. Okay, questions on that? All right, have at her.